Hi, I'm Kelly, and welcome to my channel all about chemistry. Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. This video is all about density. Have you ever wondered why a helium balloon floats, but then when you blow one up yourself, it sinks? Or why does oil float on top of water? It all has to do with density. What is it? How do we calculate it? And can we see examples of it in real life? Plus, I'll show you an activity you can do at home using things that you have in your kitchen. First, what is density? Here are the key points. Density is the amount of stuff in a certain amount of space. The formula for density is mass divided by volume. Stuff divided by space. The units for mass and volume can vary, but the most common ones that we use in chemistry are either grams per milliliter for liquids and gases, or grams per cubic centimeter for solids. Density is a physical property of matter, so that means it can be used to describe and observe matter. Each element has its own unique density, so if we don't know what an element is, but we can calculate the density, we can determine unknown substances using that property. Let's do a couple of practice problems using the density formula. Calculate the density of a cube with a volume of 5 cubic centimeters and a mass of 13.5 grams. Using the formula mass over volume, we take 13.5 grams and divide it by 5 cubic centimeters. This equals 2.7 grams per cubic centimeter. When units are different in the numerator and the denominator, they don't cancel out. So that's why density has two units. It carries the unit for mass and volume. Calculate the density of a liquid with a volume of 3 milliliters and a mass of 8.1 grams. First, we substitute the values into the density formula, and then we calculate 8.1 grams divided by 3 milliliters. The final answer is 2.7 grams per milliliter. Let's try a word problem. Aluminum has a density of 2.7 grams per cubic centimeter. A mystery cube is found to have a mass of 20 grams and a volume of 5 cubic centimeters. Is this cube made of pure aluminum? We can solve this by dividing 20 grams by 5 cubic centimeters, which gives us 4 grams per cubic centimeter. This does not equal the density of aluminum. So the cube is not made of pure aluminum. To check your understanding, try out this practice problem and leave your answer in the comments below. So why do helium balloons float and why does oil float on top of water? And what does it have to do with density? Things that are more dense are more tightly packed because they have more stuff in a given amount of space. Things that are less dense have molecules that are less tightly packed. When the molecules are less tightly packed, they float on top of things that are more dense. Helium is less dense than the air in our atmosphere. So when we put helium inside a balloon, it floats. And when we blow up a balloon ourselves, we're using the carbon dioxide from our exhale. Carbon dioxide is more dense than the air in our atmosphere. So balloons that we blow up ourselves sink. The same concept applies to oil and water. Oil is less dense than water, so it floats on top of water, and the molecules in oil are less tightly packed than the molecules in water. A fun activity that you can try at home is to make something called a density tower. I'm going to show you that using a few household products. Here's how. Welcome to my lab setup. To go through our materials, we've got different liquids and they all have different densities. We've got some honey, some vegetable oil, some water that I've dyed green with green food coloring just so that we can see it, and some rubbing alcohol that I've dyed with red food coloring so that we can tell the difference between the rubbing alcohol and the water. You can use other liquids, but this is just what I had in the kitchen. Some other suggestions would be uh, dish soap, maple syrup. I'll put a list on here for you. Okay, so these are my materials. I've also got a turkey baster. It's just helpful to be able to put the materials into the cup. Okay, I'm gonna take a cup. I recommend using something clear so that you can see the different liquids. First, before you start, make a prediction about what you think is going to be the most dense 
and what you think is going to be the least dense and pour them into the cup accordingly. I'm looking at these and I think honey is gonna be the most dense. We'll have to see about the rest. So we're gonna start with honey. We're just gonna add a layer to the bottom. Try not to get any on the sides. So I've got layer one is honey. Layer two, I'm gonna go with water. So I'm gonna use my turkey baster to put the water into the container. The water's in. So far the water is floating on top of the honey. So water is looking less dense. Next, let's do oil. Okay, this is just vegetable oil. Sorry about the noise. So now we've got our oil layer. Okay, the oil is on top of the water. Okay, now we're gonna do the rubbing alcohol. Okay, at first it might mix in a little bit, but eventually it'll settle. In science, things don't always go as planned, and that's okay, but we can learn from it anyways. So you can see the honey on the bottom, and here this kind of greenish brownish liquid is that actually some of the red rubbing alcohol mixed in with the water as I was pouring it in. And the oil is slightly separating the rubbing alcohol from the water, but you can tell that some of the rubbing alcohol is actually mixing in with the water. And that's why you see this kind of brownish tint in the middle. This has to do with the type of substance that you use. So for example, rubbing alcohol and water, here I'll show you. Rubbing alcohol and water can be mixed. So we do that, they mix together. But then if we put oil in, what happens? The oil is going to go on top of the layer of mixed rubbing alcohol and water. Alcohol and water are like substances, so they mix together, whereas oil is not. And that has to do with their intermolecular forces, which is a whole other topic. But it's worth noting that things that are like dissolve together. Things that aren't will not. They'll be separate like oil and water or oil and rubbing alcohol. Different liquids will layer into your container differently based on the density. I did one earlier and here you can see the nice different layers with the rubbing alcohol on top, the oil, the water, and then the honey at the bottom. They stay nice and separated. So that's what I had. It worked once and it kind of worked again, but it was a little different than I planned. As long as we can learn from it, that's the point. That was also the first time I had done a demo on video. I'm used to doing that kind of stuff in a classroom and I'm learning from it too. There's lots of different things that you can do with density towers. You can use different substances. You can add in pieces of solid material, depending on what you have around your house. Here are some suggestions for that. I'm really interested to know if you use any different substances from your kitchen, what they are and how they mix together. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you try it out on your own. I would love to hear some different variations from you. Stay positive and keep learning.